Hey guys, EVB Man here. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at another super fast printer. Uh, it's like we're seeing just super fast printers coming out every single day. And this one surprised me because it's from Anchor. And this is the Anchor M5. This is a printer that has AI detection to help you with your prints and prints at 250 millimeters per second. That's fast. It's gonna cut your print time down significantly. So one of the things about this printer that you'll find is that it has a really decent sized build plate as well, 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters. It also comes with a PEI flexible build plate that's gonna allow you to really remove it and then uh, and get your prints out super easy. It does have auto bed leveling. And this is what I've noticed. Lately, the printers that we're getting here on the channel, they are out of the box ready to print. This one has no leveling screws at all none whatsoever you just literally turn this thing on after you put it together and all it takes is maybe just i think it was maybe about four to six screws yeah probably about six screws and that is the the actual the, the z-axis once you put that in you're set to go because it auto levels itself and it's ready to print it also has a great extruder has 0.4 millimeter nozzle uh good temperature right that we're looking at 260 to 100 c and then it supports print speeds of anywhere from 50 all the way up to 250 millimeters. Acceleration of 250 millimeters per second. So that's gonna also buy that speed as the print head can move from side to side fast. Not just only print, but also moving from one point to another, which is significantly important when you wanna print fast. Now, a lot of material. PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, has powerless recovery, has real-time monitoring, it has a webcam that can take 720, 1080p, it does time lapses, it has night vision, yeah, we're talking about a printer still, and it also has a filament runout sensor. This thing has an app as well that allows you to monitor your prints, Wi-Fi for print capabilities, so you don't have to walk around with any SDs, and it also has onboard memory as well. It is packed with features and it is premium made. This thing is solid, it looks great, and it prints great too. Let's take a closer look at some of the prints that we were able to print. We'll take a closer look at the printer. And I'll tell you, this one also, there's an upgraded color kit where you're gonna be able to print uh, six spools, six different colors are gonna come in so that you can actually use this as a multicolor or multi-material type printer. Uh, we can't wait to get our hands on that. Uh, so let's take a closer look at this printer and you'll see why I'm excited. Now, the Anchor Make M5 3D printer is uh, a very, very good looking and polished printer. Now, it's more of an appliance than it is a 3D printer. When you take a look at just the overall aesthetics, the way the rails are hidden, everything is covered up, it's a really good looking machine. Now, we're gonna take a look at the bed and we're gonna look at all these prints that we just uh, generated off of the printer so you can see what our experience has been. Now, the first thing I just wanted to highlight is that this is the fastest bed slinger that we have on the channel. I um, mean, it has a really nice size build plate. We're talking 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters. And what I like about this is that it also includes a flex PEI build plate. So this build plate right here uh, makes it really easy for you to be able to remove prints. Um, and also, two things that's going to happen with this build plate. First is that things are going to stick. You know, we haven't had a print not stick on this. And then the second thing is that as soon as it cools off, your objects will just pop off easily and it has a really nice finish on the bottom. Now, in addition to that, you basically have AI technology. There's a little AI lens right here that basically is monitoring your print, looking at um, the quality of your print, and it's gonna alert you if it sees anything that you should pay attention to so that you don't spend, let's say, 12 hours running a print and then find that there is a defect. It also has <laughs> uh, incredible bed leveling. Uh, this is one thing that right out of the box, it automatically leveled itself um, very easily. You know, there's not, there aren't any knobs for you to adjust, which makes this a delight. So I love printers that right out of the box just print. So this is something that's really easy to use. And I highly recommend this for an experienced 3D printer or someone who is going into it for the very first time. You also then have a dual gear extruder, right? So your extruder, even though it's covered up right here and nicely enclosed, um, basically you have a dual gear extruder 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and this guy's gonna go up to 260 C, which is gonna give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to different uh, print material that you're gonna be able to use. It has the bed, will come up to 100 C, and the big thing here is gonna be the print speeds. Print speeds as slow as 50, all the way up to 250 millimeters per second. Now, uh, that 
uh, combined with acceleration, and that's you know how quickly it's going to move from side to side, uh, 2,500 millimeters per second. This is going to cut down your print time uh, incredibly. It's going to make it faster for you to be able to get uh, something that's a concept to a print, something that you're wanting to print at home for fun. It's just going to come out really quick on this, so highly like the speed here. Um, you do have a lot of flexible material types that you're going to be able to print off of this. It, you have standard power loss recovery. You have uh, time lapse. You do have both two settings, 720 and 1080p. And then you also have night vision, right? And then, you know, the standard stuff that you would expect with most printers when it comes to filament runout sensors. Now, this printer is a Wi-Fi printer, so it's really easy to uh, load prints uh, through the app both uh, and monitor it through your cell phone, both inside of your network and outside of your network. It has one of the cleanest, I would say, interfaces that I've seen in a long time. Um, if you want to be able to preheat, you come into this area here. You'll notice how you have the visuals. You can start your preheating. Very simple. If you want to go into the control area, here you can move um, all different aspects of your printer. You can lock the motors. You can uh, work with the extruder if you'd like to do that. You know, if, if you want to load or unload uh, filament. You have your Z offset settings, your auto level, you know, basic settings that you'll be able to find here. Uh, the actual uh, start function has two modes. You can either choose to print from something that's local, right, onboard memory, right? So here are all the models that came preloaded. Or what you could do is you could do something that you actually load yourself, right? So this is um, this option right here, which is grayed out, is if I have something connected to it. So you have two options. I'll tell you, I've been doing everything through uh, Wi-Fi. Um, I, I like that function better. I think it's easier for me. Uh, and it's just worked really, really well. Now, uh, the one thing I will mention is you can see here the current temperature of your printer, both bed and your nozzle, as well as Wi-Fi. Um, I've been testing this for now about two weeks now and have not yet had a failed print. And we're going to go ahead and look at some of the prints. But before we do that, I also want to talk about uh, more about the actual printer itself. A couple of things I'll just highlight, and this is just something to watch out for. Uh, you'll notice here that you have these grooves here, right? This, this is where your belt uh, for your bed for it moving forward and back are found. What I found is, and keep an eye on this if you pick up this printer, is that filament, loose filament, will fall here. So you'll want to make sure that you clean that out because I'm concerned that it would affect kind of, um, you know, just the movement of this component here. So make sure that you just monitor that as this is moving forward and back. Now you do have a filament spool mount and you can choose to mount it in two places. I chose to go on top. Um, if you're gonna have this, let's say on a bookshelf and you have limited space, you can just move this over to the side and you'll notice that it's running down uh, the side here. The filament comes into this filament loader here. This is a direct drive, so there's nothing really um, going on except you know, right here, this is where all the pull is taking place. It goes through this Bowden tube, comes through here, and this is the little lever that you use to just open it up when you want to manually feed it. You do have the ability to press a button and have it uh, pop out, you know, just extrude filament. Um, that's something that you'll be able to do. But everything here is nicely enclosed. Now, you'll notice, you know, this is just standard stuff that happens when you're printing, right? So this is what I'm talking about, uh, just stray filament that may just fall onto the sides, um, you know, that you'll want to clean off. Now, when you run this print for the very first time, it's going to run a bead of filament here in the back. And, you know, I would have loved if it was happening in the front uh, because this is, there's no narrow area here. There's no pop out here. And every now and then I just worry if I don't have this perfectly aligned, that it is not going to um, fall in the right spot. So I'll just go ahead and align it like this to make sure that I'm comfortable with it. And then once we run the print, you'll see it uh, come over here. It's always good to wipe this off with um, isopropyl, uh, what is it, alcohol? I can't even say it, <laughs> but with some alcohol wipes. And just to keep, make sure that this is clear, especially with, as you touch it, uh, because you don't want to have any um, oils that were going to impact the prints. Now, another thing to note about the printer is that it does run a little loud. Uh, so this is the fan is loud. And if you're going to have this in a common area, you want to make sure you understand that. I'm just going to put in a sound meter so that you can understand how much noise is being generated. Now, this is white noise, right? I'm going to stay quiet for a second so that you can hear what I hear. All right, so you're looking at around 50 dB. Now, this is going to be white noise, right? It's shh that's going on but just to be aware that you're gonna get this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up a print so you can see how the print example, or at least the print experience goes, and we're gonna go over our prints. All right, so now while the printer's going, uh, you have to print your traditional Benchy, why not? 
Uh, this is our traditional bench sheet. You can see the quality on this. Um, it has kind of like, I would say some boogers here that we can just clean off. But overall, at 250 millimeters per second, uh, this did really, really well. This is a 45-minute benchy. Typically, it takes uh, well over an hour to print. Um, no stringing, no overhangs. Very, very happy with this. By the way, this is uh, Polymaker uh, PLA, matte PLA, right, that I'm using here. And this was just using the standard model that came out of the printer. And we're actually running another one right now so you can see what the startup cycle is right there. We then also then did a standard XY cube, right? And you can see here the XY cube came out really nice. Everything is really nice and clean. Uh, everything is just, it just as you would expect from a, a good printer. So I really like the way that came out. Uh, we also then uh, printed some chain mail. Wanted to see how well it would do. And again, this is a print in place model. Uh, this is chain mail, and you can see it works, it's functional. Um, I didn't have to have any problems with just trying to break it apart. It came out really, really nice. We'll just make sure that is in focus for all of you so you can see how that looks. You can see how, how nice that turned out. And then what we did is we started printing some more functional parts. So this, these are some parts for a filter that I was printing. And so here is a filter cover. Um, I didn't remove the, uh, the part right here of the benching, so you see some of that uh, still there. Uh, but that's my fault, not the printer's fault. But this is the actual uh, print itself. And you can see, very, very clean, and more importantly, super duper fast, right? Still using that same Polymaker PLA. Now the next model we're taking a look at um, is actually found on memory uh, for the printer, and did nothing with this outside of hit print. Uh, this is um, kind of like a silk PLA, so you can see uh, it's a little bit shinier. And you'll notice that there is some stringing. Um, I could probably have dehydrated the, the filament. This filament has been um, sitting on a shelf for some time. But the overall quality here is really good. So you can see the overhangs, right, in this test, and then how all these parts are looking. So this did uh, relatively well. Now the print has already started, so you're seeing the actual speed as it's printing this benchy. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at our next model. And this is a actual um, eyeglass case. This is a print in place case. And I wanted to see how accurate it would be. And this area that you see right here is for magnets, right? Uh, and this is, I think, from clock spring, right? So we'll open it up. And you'll notice it's inspecting the first layer. So that's what I went ahead and did and now it's speeding up. And this is where you hear that uh, fan noise. But here, we're going back to this uh, model. You put some magnets here, and then basically this could hold eyeglasses. Now, take a look at how clean this was. Again, this was at 250 millimeters per second, stock settings, I'm not doing any kind of tweaking. I wanted to see how good their profiles were. Uh, that's important because, you know, if you're working with a printer, you just want to go ahead and do that. Notice this first layer, how clean it is. And again, everything here works. This was not attached. Right, this is initial print, and it works. Now the next thing that we did is we did some vase mode prints, right? And this is another uh, beautiful print. Um, this is also uh, from the same, I would say, designer, vase mode, right? Look how, and this one has some sparkle to it. You can see that, right? 250 millimeters per second again. Uh, we did a little tree. Again, and this is also at 250 millimeters per second. Everything here, same filament, was done. You can see how nice that looks. Vase mode. Now the next thing we printed was some uh, busts. And this is Lobo. Check how nice this quality is. Uh, really, really, really nice print. Uh, this was done 250 millimeters per second. Standard settings, nothing out of the ordinary. And look at this detail, right? Very little, I would say, cleanup required. You could probably uh, prime this and paint this. Look how nice this is. And this is 80, I think it's 80% of the original size. Um, so, you know, this is almost full bed, as you can see here, right there. And here is the bottom to it. So, beautiful, beautiful quality. And again, 250 millimeters per second. And you can see the details there. And even the top here, which is typically a lot of printers have a problem with, um, it did a really nice job there. And look at the detail for the hair. 
All right. So what about the printer? Do I recommend this printer? Um, this is a great printer for an experienced user. It's a great second printer. There is a color module coming out for this, which I'm really excited and hope to get our hands on, that's going to allow you to have six rolls of filament and do multicolor prints. And I really think that multicolor prints is where things are at because that's going to allow you to, for example, for this model that we have right here, have the color of the hair one color, the skin another, the outfit in a different color. So you literally, you can imagine this being black, brown, this being skin color, you know, the cigar being here a different color, this being, again, the, the actual uh, gray or metal look. So there's a lot that you could do uh, with color. So I can't wait to see how that module works on this printer. But for the very first printer from Anchor, uh, this is a really, really nice printer. And also, it's elite forward because the speed, and as you can see here, no errors, no failed prints so far, knock on wood. Uh, this thing performs really well. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.